I'm Valder Beebe, host of the Valder Beebe Show. I am famously known for that celebrity interview. Interviews with today's pop icons, movie stars, and celebrities. Tune into our FM radio broadcast and our online broadcast. Visit ValderBeebeShow.com and SoundCloud.com slash ValderBeebeShow. I'll see you there. Good day, Nancy Glass. Hi, Valder. Hi, how are you? Great. Thank you for joining me here on the Valder BB Show, broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas on Y99 KYBS. And the first thing I want to tell you is I've missed you so much on TV. You're very kind, but you may <laughs> be the only one. I, what I do now is I produce TV shows. I know, I know, but you were so great in front of the camera. I want my audience kind. to know that... Nancy Glass is a six-time Emmy award-winning producer and writer, and she's the creator of, the, of Nancy Glass Productions. But she's here today, 25 years after the crimes of Jeffrey Dahmer. That shocked the world. She's got a 20-year follow-up because she did an interview 20 years ago. All right, let me ask you this. You know, I surveyed my audience. You know the millennials, they don't have a clue who he is. Somebody told me, they, one millennial told me they thought that was a dance. But it, <laughs> anyway, they, but, the, but the more seasoned crowd, they do remember the Dahmer crimes. And what's different in 20 years? Well, first of all, just to explain what the Dahmer crimes were, this was a guy who killed 17 men. He killed them. He dismembered. He cannibalized. And some of them, before he did all that, he tried to turn into zombies. So all of it is just creepy and weird and evil. Uh, and what was really weird at the time was how normal he appeared to be. What's changed is, well, first of all, we hear him speak, one of the only times he ever spoke. But now, looking back, we look at how it happened, how nobody noticed that 17 men were literally disappeared. And nobody reported anybody missing, and nobody put together. Well, some of them were reported missing by their families, but nobody really paid attention because it was men, and nobody put it all together. And the thing is, all these years later, we look at how people got away with it, why nobody asked those questions, and how it all affected his family. And two victims who never spoke before, two men who say they were sexually assaulted by Jeffrey Dahmer and were ashamed to come forward, two servicemen who served with him in Germany, uh, they speak for the first time. That's incredible. It really is. It's amazing what time will do. It really yeah. will. Yeah. You know, there's this little thing in, in the Bible that says that what's done in the dark will come to the light. Right. Right. And that sounds a little bit of what we have here. 20 years have passed, and now people who never spoke before are coming forward. And I'm so fascinated by his family speaking. I always wonder what happens to the family. I really do. Well, Valder, it's a really good question. And I have to ask you, I mean, you just made a very poignant reference to the Bible. Um, one of the things his family did was they clung to their faith, which made them feel comforted. What they did was they got Jeffrey to embrace their faith, to take the Bible as truth, and they feel because of that he was forgiven. But I'm not so sure that he knew what he was saying, and I'm not so sure what he did was forgivable, and certainly not for a lot of people. Do you? Well, that's why I'm down here and not up there, Nancy. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's because a good I have, response. That's very yeah. good. Well, you know, and, and I don't want to go biblical, but you know, I, I think God cries when He's at a murder trial. He cries for the murdered, and He cries for the accused. I, I, I don't know how He makes that decision, but His family, I guess they were using whatever tool that they could to find some peace. Right. 
because for them it was so shocking to hear every single thing he did. In fact, they really didn't want him to go to trial because they thought, you know, who need, I mean, who wants to suffer more? Who wants to make the victim's family suffer more? But they felt that if he went to trial, somebody from the medical community might study him and they might get some answers. They were very much affected and when he and they forgave him again because they felt their faith would allow them to but when he died they were very 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 uh, devastated despite what he did and by the way what he did was so evil so terrible destroyed so many families it was it, it's beyond our comprehension it even, is it's even today we still can't comprehend that yeah. You had an opportunity to, to bring this forth to the public. Tell me why now? What, 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 will, what will it serve us? Well, I think, Valder, it's important for us to understand what we could be living with and around. He really was the serial killer next door. I think people still want answers. I think people want to know, again, how he got away with it. Yes. And my heart goes out to his family because I just can't imagine something like that happening and what it does to the people in the, in the privacy of their life. How do they talk about it? How do they right. deal with it? You know, that's a really hard thing. And also the victims. I feel for them also, too, because they probably never really recovered from this. How can you? How I can you? Know. When you hear that your loved one was murdered and then you hear these gory, brutal details, because here's what's really interesting also, Valder. He confessed to every single detail of what he did, every gory detail, 160-page confession, and yet he couldn't remember their names. Mm. He just, they weren't people to him. No, but evil has its own way. I think if you're not evil, you don't understand. Right. Those of us who are trying to stand in the light we may see a little naively, a little differently, but evil has its own methodology. Yeah, it does. Nancy, you are still on top of your game. How do you stay on top after, after all these years in the business? Uh, I don't, I never think that way. Valger, please. I, uh, <laughs> self-loathing is my greatest quality. What I do now is um, our company, um, Glass Entertainment Group, I named it after myself because I have no imagination. <laughs> we produce a lot of TV shows and it's very exciting and we mentor a lot of young people and um, this is an interesting time to be a storyteller and I am always inspired by what's out there and the stories that we can tell and the stories we share. Um, I have to say the shows that we produce are very kind of, um, they're nice. If Ooh. You, yeah, they're nice. So we do, in fact, uh, we do three Houston vets, uh, the vet life. Uh, oh, for Animal I've Planet. had them on the show. Okay. You have? Aren't they the best? They are. The guys are really, really good, and, yeah. and, and they bring their family in and yeah. the pets yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. good yeah. one. Yeah. So that's pretty much what we do. But we thought this was an important story to tell. It is. Okay, so 20 years later, where are we going to watch this, and when are we going to watch this? Oxygen, two-part series on Saturday night at 7 and on Sunday night at 7. Oxygen is now a crime network, and they do great stuff. Oh, well, i got to set my DVR. I'm traveling, but I'm going to make sure I get a chance to watch this. A Nancy Glass Entertainment production. Nancy Glass, I wish you the best that life has to offer, and thank, thank you so you much too. for gracing the Valder BB show. I really appreciate thanks, this. Valder. And thanks for the update on Mr. Dahmer. Okay. Bye.